Welcome to this series of videos here where I'm going to show you about the physics data booklet in order to help uh, physics SL or HL students to prepare for their exams. So this data booklet, you're allowed to use it in all of your exams. So paper one, paper two, and paper three, you're allowed to use this. So I hope this data booklet becomes your best friend if it isn't already. Uh, so I'm going to start by just showing you the next page. So this is the first page right here on it. Uh, just so you recognize it and this is the next page now on this page right here let's just take a look at a few key features here because what this one does is it shows you some fundamental constants so things that we might need to use is g for example that's the acceleration due to gravity on earth and it's 9.81 meters per second squared we've got the gravitational constant We've got Avogadro's constant, that's the number, uh, well this tells you about how many particles there are in one mole. Uh, we've got the gas constant, that's used in thermal physics. We've got the Boltzmann's constant, so that one is sometimes needed. Um, but we also have the Stefan Boltzmann's constant, so this one right here comes into effect in uh, both astrophysics and topic 8, um, with energy power and climate change. The Coulomb constant, this K right here, is different than the Boltzmann's one. And the way you can figure it out is that the Coulomb one has to do with electricity. So that's the one that has some Coulombs going on. The permittivity and permeability of free space, those are just constants as well. Uh, those are used a lot less often. But the speed of light in a vacuum, that one comes up pretty often. That's C, it's 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. That shows up a lot of different places, uh, not only just in waves, but also other places as well. Um, we've got Planck's constant, H. That shows up in quantum mechanics. Um, it also shows up you know, when you're trying to look at energy levels, E equals HF. This is the H that comes into there. Now, the elementary charge, this tells you the charge of an electron. And other things, for example, they'll have a charge of, I don't know, 2E or something else. So this is always a multiple. Uh, so charges always come in multiples of this number here. Now you might be considering uh, the electron rest mass. In other words, uh, this is if you could stop an electron, here's how its mass would be. And you can also do that in universal or atomic mass units here. So these are these U here. And it's also in an MeV per C squared. That's another unit of energy or mass, sorry. Um, MeV is a unit of energy. MeV per C squared is a unit of mass. Now you might think, why do we bother doing electron, proton, and neutron masses, and also this uh, atomic mass unit? Why do we have them in MeV per C squared? Well, these ones come up to really help you when you're using, uh, this is in topic 7. Uh, when you're doing E equals mc squared, so something with a binding energy. And it turns out it's really handy to figure out uh, if you have your mass defect is some sort of units like this right here. You can convert things MeV per C squared, and then the C will cancel out, and it'll make things a lot easier. So those are the main constants here that we look at. Now there's an extra page just afterwards, and it reminds you about some of these prefixes. So for example, if you have gigahertz, then you know it's 10 to the 9 hertz. Or if you have mega something, like mega electron volts, like we just saw, that's 10 to the 6. And a lot of students don't really remember or think to look here. So don't forget, if ever you forget these things, even nano, for example, like the um, wavelength of visible light, is on the order of nanometers. So that would mean uh, 10 to the minus 9. So we use these units a lot, as well as milli and centi and kilo. Now if we go to the next page, you have a few other unit conversions. So this is useful for uh, astrophysics, these three right here. So the light year is this many meters, a one parsec. Remember that means that's a parallax angle of one arc second. That's if you've done uh, option E, that's the astrophysics one. It tells you how many light years it is. By the way, one light year is the distance that light travels in one year. Now one astronomical unit, that's the distance from Earth to the sun. Uh, so that's this. Now this one comes in to help you out, believe it or not, in uh, waves. When you're looking at um, angles in radians, it helps to understand what one radian is. And it's 180 degrees over pi. And you can also convert then from degrees to radians by just uh, inverting this. Now kilowatt hour, that's a unit of uh, how, well, this is, a kilowatt is a unit of power. And hour is a unit of time. 
This is often, for example, electricity bills are usually given in kilowatt hours. So it just tells you how many joules that is. So that's how much energy you've used. Now atmosphere, that tells you how many newtons per meter squared something else. That also tells you in kilopascals or even millimeters of mercury. This is used in uh, topic three under thermal physics. So I'm just going through quickly a few of the basics here before we get to the real stuff. Um, then they give you electrical circuit symbols. The main ones you're going to see are cells, batteries, you're going to see ammeters and voltmeters. This is a switch. And resistors are drawn with a square like this right here. Then you can have uh, different types of sensors like a thermistor or an LDR, a light dependent resistor. And those are the main ones you're going to see. Now if you're looking at topic one, this is one that uh, is basically just all about uh, you know, the difference between vector and scalar. They talk about things like uncertainty and errors. And also, this is, this is really handy. It actually tells you how to find the uncertainty on something. So if y is in equal to some, constant, some quantity times another one divided by another one, just to show you, if you wanted the uncertainty on y, it would be related to the uncertainty on a and b and c in this way. That's pretty handy. And if you have just two values that are being added, so let's say a plus b or a minus b, well then the uncertainties just add. So this tells you that adding or subtracting uncertainties is easy. If you have multiplying or dividing things, it gets a little bit tougher, but it's not so bad. And this one comes in really handy if you're a higher level physics student, uh, because when you do two dimensional uh, motion, that's from your topic nine, motion and fields, this helps you out to how to break up something into components. So if something goes up, you know, with this value A at this angle, it tells you that the horizontal component here, this distance right here, you know, from here to here, is going to be A cos theta. And this height right here, this value right here, is going to be A sine theta. So that comes in really handy, I think, as well. But now let's spend a little bit more time going into some of the details. So I'm going to go over this one, topic two, mechanics. Now these first three equations are all about the equations of motion. So these are for accelerated motion. So this is really handy, okay? These are really important. Um, and in my opinion, there's one other one worth memorizing. So I'm gonna write the ones worth memorizing off to the side. So I don't think there's many equations that one should memorize for physics because you get most of the equations, but this is one of the ones I think that's important. Now let's maybe define what some of these different things mean. So we've got S. S is the displacement. Oh, it's supposed to be an M here, displacement. And that's measured in meters. That's what the S is. We've got U, that's an initial speed or velocity. That's going to be measured in meters per second. We've got V, which is the final, oops, final speed, which is also in meters per second. Uh, we've got T, which is the time elapsed, that's measured in seconds. And we've got A, A is the acceleration. And that's measured in meters per second squared. So these ones come in to help you out for these right here. Okay, so those are what everything here means. Now here we've got uh, what a lot of people like to call Newton's second law. But actually, Newton's second law is probably better written as this, uh, F equals delta P over delta T. So that's a change in momentum over time. So let's maybe define what F is then. So we've got F here, that's a force. And that's measured in Newtons. That's how we can write the force. But you can also figure out an alternate unit for force. That's because if you know the units for mass, and you know the units for acceleration, then you can say that one Newton is also the same as, let's see here, uh, units for mass, well, M is mass, and that's measured in kilograms. So if that's the case, this would be kilogram meters per second squared. That's what that is. So this right here, this is Newton's second law right here. That's what a lot of people at least call. I'm gonna write a little N2 for Newton's second law, but so is this, N2. 
Now we've got P equals MV. So this one right here, that P is momentum. And that's a vector, and it's measured in, well, let's see. These are kilograms, and these are measured in meters per second. So it'll be kilogram meters per second. That's how we can write that one. Now we've got impulse. An impulse is just, um, well, you could say it's a change in momentum, because m delta v. Or you could say it's the area under a force uh, time graph. But this one doesn't really have any weird units, so that's okay, I think. Work, however... Uh, that's what W is. So W is the work done. And that's a unit of energy, so it's measured in joules. F is your applied force in newtons. And S is your displacement measured in meters. So that tells you about work. Now we've got different types of energy. These two right here are called kinetic energy. So EK equals kinetic energy. And that has to do with something that's moving. And that's also measured in joules. And this one right here, EG, is the potential energy. Well, more specifically, it's the gravitational potential energy. That's also measured in joules. So that's pretty handy. This helps you out uh, if you want to know how much stored energy you have if you raise up a certain height. So H is your height. Maybe I'll write that one down. So H is the height. That's measured in meters. G is acceleration due to gravity, so it's 9.81 meters per second squared. If ever you need to estimate it, though, on paper one, where you're not allowed um, a calculator, you can always assume that it's roughly 10. It's not exactly, but it's kind of 10. Now you have this equation here for power. And this one right here, P, that's power. That's the letter we use. For some reason, they didn't tell you that. So the power is given by capital P. P is power. That's measured in watts. Now, this equation here for power equals FV, that's pretty useful, but a way better one, and one that shows up much more often on exams, at least it comes to save the day, it's another one worth memorizing. And I'd say that it's power equals energy over time or it's work over time. This almost looks like a V here, so this is W. Work over time. So that would mean that it's measured in, let's see, units of energy, those are joules, and time is in seconds. So what that tells you then is that if you want to measure the power of something, the power is in joules per second, which is otherwise known as watts. So this one right here, I would actually say even that uh, there's not many equations really worth memorizing. I would say if you only memorize two equations, this is one of the ones to memorize. I'm going to put huge stars by it, because I think it's that important. This one right here shows up to save the day so often. You can do all sorts of crazy examples where this one comes to help you out. For example, let's say you're doing something with, um, I don't, I've seen some examples in uh, exams where they ask about a motor, and the motor is raising some mass, a certain height, in a certain time. And then they say, if the voltage is this, what's the current? And a lot of people think, what? How do we go from something going up and down, so that's clearly something that's mechanics, to some sort of thing with voltage and current. And it turns out this is the trick. Use power, because power is the energy per time. So if you could figure out in that case right here how much it's gone up, that's this right here. And if they tell you how long it took to go, that's the time. And now you have the power in watts, or in joules per second, because those are the same. And from there, then, you can convert that power to the electrical version of power, which is just by setting that same power in watts equal to, well, VI. You can see that in uh, topic 5. So that would be here. So here we can convert that power to this one, P equals VI. They're one and the same. Now the very last thing I'd like to show you from this one is right here. This, is, this one right here is all about circular motion. Whoops, I should probably undo that. So this one here is all about circular motion. So this one, okay, this is a little a. I like to write a little c. That's a centripetal acceleration. 
oops, acceleration. So acceleration, that'll still be measured in meters per second squared. Now it's equal to v squared over r, or 4 pi squared over, uh, sorry, r over t squared, where t is the period. Now what's important then is that in case you want f, c, in other words, in case you want the centripetal force, well, you can use this property that F equals MA, so then you can just say, well, what if I just throw an M in front of it? So M times A, so it's MV squared over R. That one's pretty handy to be able to get to. So if you want the centripetal or circular motion, this one is for circular motion here. So those are the main equations that you need for topic two. Topic two is a fairly big topic, and it sets the stage for a lot of different types of units. If you can see, we've done a ton of different units here, but it's really nice to know what each of them does and what it can do for you.